Hey guys, welcome to Temez's Tips, Tricks, and Tutorials. This video is the first part in a series of tutorials about background controllers. Now, the thing about background controllers is that, for the most part, they really only do things that you can already do with regular stage elements. The main advantage to using background controllers is that you can easily control when certain actions take place or make actions repeat themselves. Also, some things which can be tedious to pull off with ordinary stage element tricks can be accomplished more easily by using background controllers. Let's start by looking at one of the more unique controllers, Animation Change. This controller lets you swap out one animation for another after a certain amount of time has passed in the stage. Since this is the first tutorial, while I'm going through this example, I will be describing the parts that make up background controllers for future reference. I've made a very simple stage here to show examples of stuff working in-game, so let's start by adding in an animated stage item. It's just a simple animation to go with my simple stage. Now, let's put a controller on it to change it to something else. The first step in using a background controller is assigning an ID number to the item in the stage you want to control. ID equals 1 for our example. If you are using controllers on different parts of the stage, you would use different ID numbers for each item in the stage. Now we set the definition for the controller. BG, CT, RL, DEF, and then the name of the definition, which here is flashing. Any background control item that we put under this def will be part of this series of actions on this stage item until we add in a new background control def to start controlling something else. CTRL ID here is what links this series of actions to the stage item. Control ID must match the ID number for the controller to work. Now, one big advantage of stage background controllers is this. You can have up to 10 IDs here separated by commas, and this one controller will act on all items of the stage that's assigned those IDs. The other element of this code that you can use is loop time. If you want the actions that you code here to be done over and over, you can use loop time to set how long it takes for the actions to begin again. We'll do a loop in a bit. So now we have our background control def name and our control ID set. So let's make the animation that we are going to change into. This is all we need for our new animation because it's just going to take the other stage item elements like delta and start from the original animation. Now under the control def we put our controller. BGCTRL and then the name. I like to put the control ID in the name there with a small description of what it's doing. It's not necessary to do this, but for me it helps keep things organized when using several controllers. So type equals anim means that we are controlling the animation number on the stage item. Time equals 120 is the start time. That means the number of in-game ticks before this action take place. Time also has two other optional parameters, which would be used one after another separated by commas. After the start time, you have end time and loop time. Now, personally, I haven't found many uses to have an individual loop time on the control here instead of using a global loop time up here. You can also put a control ID on a line here, just like the one up here, to make this one control act on a specific background item. But again, I haven't really found much use for this. Now finally, we have value. Value here is the animation number that we want to change to. Begin action 2 is animation 2, so our value is 2 because that's what we're going to change to. So now let's see it work in game. Round one. 
As you can see, the animation changed from one to another. It starts off as the first animation, then changes to the second one, and is remaining the second animation. Okay, so let's use a bit more of the potential of this controller and have the animation change back and forth in a loop. We add in a loop time under the background control def. and add in another animation change background control. For our example here, we're going to have the, the time that they are displayed be equal. Now, by adding in a control to change it to animation 1 at 0 ticks, we're going to have it return to the original animation at the beginning of the loop. So, I like to keep them in sequential order, so I've put this on the very beginning because the time equals zero that's the first action that's going to happen at the beginning of the loop. Now let's see it in Mugen. Alright that's our second animation there's our first one again second one again and as you can see they're repeating over and over again. Now when using background controllers once the loop begins the timer is reset for your controllers under this def. So you control how long your last action is displayed with the loop time. If you wanted to have the second animation to just display for half a second, you would have your time equals on your controller to change to the animation to be whenever you want, and then you would have your loop time to be that time plus 30. So it would show animation 2, and then the loop would start, and since animation 1's time is set to 0, it will change back to the first animation. Well, that's it for this tutorial. A text version of this speech is available for download in the video description, as well as a simple stage in case you want to experiment with it.